Thanks, Becky. I'm Stacy Peterson, the Adult Services Manager here at the library, and I am so delighted to welcome back Annie Hansen to Books Between Bites. Yeah. Annie is a local Batavia author, who I know for a fact because she's told me, has written some of the words of some of her books right here in this building. Mm -hmm. And that makes librarians really excited. <laughs> That's cool. For over 20 years, Annie has managed Hanson Search Group, a search firm she co-founded with her husband and business partner, and has also written five books. Four books in the Kelly Clark Mystery Series, which begins with Give Me Chocolate. We'll see those titles here, as well as on the table. And her latest book, which she's going to be talking about today, is a standalone novel called Get a Grip. And we have a copy available hot off the press, um, available for checkout if you're the first to get it. If you're not the first, place a hold and we'll notify you when it's available. You also can purchase a copy here today. So please join me in welcoming Annie Hansen back to Books Between Bites. Hi everybody, thanks for having me back. It's been, um, I think I figured out, I was last here in 2015, so it's been a while. And this is my first talk um, from COVID time, pre-COVID time. So this is, I kind of took a little breather. So it's, it's cool to be back and live and chatting with everybody. So um, if I'm a little nervous though, or if I mess up, that's why, <laughs> because I'm out of practice. Um, so uh, that is, uh, what we're gonna do today is the, the book talk, um, go over introduction, a little bit about me, um, I want to talk about my series, which started in 2013 and is still going. And um, I want to go into why I took a break from the series, what took a break, and um, why I'm releasing this standalone because uh, it's you know so different from what I've been doing. Still in the cozy mystery genre, but just you know something, something a little different. I've always had the dream to do a series and then do standalones. And what I will say. 100% is standalone is so much easier than a series. Um, I think when I started the series, I did not anticipate how hard it is to keep track of details. And what I mean by that is, okay, I'm gonna put her in a orange shirt and I'm gonna have her eat pizza. Oh wait, you forgot that in book one, you said she's allergic to pizza, just things like that. And there are so many characters now in the four book series that it's just hard to remember little things like that. So this standalone was thrilling to write because it was like, wrap it up in 300 pages, be done and move on. And I'll go into that a little bit more later. Um, <clears throat> so we'll talk about Get a Grip, which is the new one. Um, I'll talk a little bit about writing, which that seems to be when I do live talks, everyone wants to kind of know the recipe or you know see the behind the scenes of how, how does it happen and what do you do in the process. So we'll, we'll go into that and then I'll answer any questions you might have. Um, today we are on BATV, courtesy of Barb, so uh, we'll, I think we'll be able to watch this later on. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Uh, my husband is here, Brent Hansen. Uh, he is also, um, co-owner of the company we started in 2001 and he's also an artist he's a guitar player so we definitely get each other in that way because we have our creative pursuits and then we have our um, technical business as well so um, that's very nice and then I have three kids um, 27 17 and then a nine-year-old so I have quite the span um, and uh, like I said I'm the author but I'm best known for the Kelly Clark mystery series which uh, has four books out. Um, hopefully the, the plan was to write a fifth and be done. That is very open-ended and I'll go into that later. I'm finding it very hard to wrap it up. <laughs> so um, we'll see. Um, I'm a Chicago-based author. All of my books are set in the Chicago suburbs. Um, I call out that I'm here for Kelly Clark Mystery Series. She lives in Geneva. Uh, I use the Graham's chocolate shop as her chocolate shop that she lives in. Um, so I've been very vocal about that, that it is the Tri-Cities, Batavia, Geneva, uh, St. Charles. Um, Get a Grip is a, is, a town is never named. Um, I have a, a couple in mind and I'll go into detail of you know, why I kind of did that, but it's a wealthy suburb outside of the Chicago, um, the city of Chicago. So, um, but you know, I kind of leave that up to the reader's imagination. You could 
you can make it whatever you want. Um, but uh, yes, all of my books are, are here in Chicago. Um, so as a way to track me or, or find me online, um, I love doing Instagram, so I'm under Annie Hansen, Annie.Hansen.Author, if you're an Instagram person. Every Wednesday I post uh, what you're reading Wednesday, and I put up the book that I'm reading that week. I try, I, I really do read about a book a week um, if I can. Um, I find that very invigorating and uh, it's just my, it's my outlet, it's my stress relief. Um, and I, what, my favorite thing is I love to post and then I love hearing back from followers of, well, what are you guys reading? Because that's how I get my ideas for what's coming next. Um, and I also have a monthly newsletter um, that I send out uh, through my email. And so if you guys want to be signed up for the newsletter, um, you can sign up for, uh, go ahead and put your name and email um, at the desk up here. So I put my top news when things are coming out. Um, you know what's happening with the series and then also what I'm reading um, I, the series this fall the entire Kelly Clark mystery series went to audiobook um, so that's very exciting it's all because that is what I'm hearing is that the wave since post COVID that um, you know when I started writing it was oh we're all moving to ebook everything's gonna be on ebook and now everything is going um, audio so audio became extremely hot during COVID um, so I am moving the whole series onto audiobook, and I can tell you that they are moving. Um, people love to listen to them. Um, the I think one, two, and three are out. The narrator is still um, in the process. I'm sorry, she's done with book number four, um, but uh, then the Amazon goes through a review process, so it's in the review process. So that will come very soon, probably within the next couple of days. Um, so definitely check me out on Audible um, for, uh, or Amazon for those audio versions of the books. Um, okay, so how many people are familiar with the Kelly Clark mystery series? Uh, okay, a lot of you. Uh, so um, what I did with the series is I, I, for writing, for me, I am always inspired first by setting. So when I first moved out to this area, um, I went into downtown Geneva, went into the Graham store, and I was hit this moment, you know, things come at me like, oh, wait a minute, what if, if you're, if you're familiar with Graham's, it has a long staircase that goes up to a second floor. And I had the idea like, well, what if somebody lived above that stair, you know, lived on top of the chocolate store and then started solving mysteries in the area. So that's where the whole Kelly Clark Mysteries series started. And I have a huge backstory to the series. And what happens is that a woman is in, living in California. She's trying, her and her husband are trying to have a baby. They're having a lot of difficulties. And she finds out on the same night that um, the husband is having an affair, the mistress is pregnant, and that he plans to kill the mistress and the unborn child. So she goes to the police, she stops that from happening. And then um, a, Two years later, she's in uh, Geneva, she's, she's relocated, and she's restarting her life by living above her sister's chocolate store and kind of getting back in the group. So that's Give Me Chocolate um, is the first book. And then how I saw this series is like an adult Nancy Drew. She starts solving mysteries in the area, so each book has its own individual mystery. But really, the whole series is her getting over this crazy backstory of this evil husband who's in jail now um, and just you know getting her life back together um, so here's meet my babies uh, <laughs> give me chocolate uh, with number one being in love um, each book is about a specific food item first one's about you know the chocolate store the second one is about them opening a coffee store um, one of the sisters wants to uh, start a donut business so that's take the donut and then um, back for some more is about um, it, another ex coming back on the scene. So, um, so that's the series. Um, and then again, I, I kind of went through um, the, the backstory. I use the uh, Lacey Peterson, uh, Scott Peterson case as kind of the inspiration. So um, if you remember, Scott Peterson uh, killed Lacey and their unborn son. Um, so it, it's not the same story, but it's kind of the same villain as who I had in mind as Scott Peterson. So I use Scott as the, um, the ex-husband when I had somebody in mind of, you know, who would that be and what would the story be. Um, and then like I mentioned, Graham's Chocolate Shop is the big setting. Uh, a lot is set on the river, uh, so you see the Fox River. 
Uh, the, in, the, in these stories, there are three sisters. So I always say that is the heart of the story. So you have Kelly, um, you have uh, Nikki, who is the chocolate shop owner, who's a big inspiration for getting Kelly back on her feet. Uh, Adele, who is Kelly's older sister, she's kind of like the wealthy, little little snobby, little step back, you know, not as reachable as Nikki. And then there's a new, there's an old flame that, come, that is on the scene, Jack. Um, and there's also some this old frenemy that comes on the scene and causes a lot of trouble in the series. So that's Kelly Clark. It's it's a lot of getting back, getting you know moving forward. Um, that that is the series. And uh, so the reason why I'm having so much trouble ending is um, I again there are a lot of those details I have to wrap up, which I'm not sure what I want to do yet. Um, and then also. Um, I just can't seem to close the loop as far as the end, specifically with the ex-husband. So I'm kind of waiting for, where am I gonna go next? And so the fourth book in the series came out in 2019. I was kind of working on the fifth, still in that place of like, Good all afternoon. Right. Would the owner of a white Kia Carnival with a license plate A, Six nine nine five six four. Please report to the checkout. Okay, hopefully that's over here. I have a great view of everyone. The look at everyone's face, and they're like, oh man. So, so a lot of people have asked, whoops, um, what's next for the Kelly Clark mystery series? And I'll be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kind of there, and so. In 2019, I was starting to figure it out, starting to take the notes, kind of waiting for the big moment where it would hit me, and um, boom, 2020. We all know what happened in 2020. Um, I was very, very um, overwhelmed by what's next, kids home from school, um, you know, what's gonna happen with our business, um, Obviously, first time I've been through a pandemic, so I just didn't know what was happening. Um, and, and so I'm asking you to kind of go back to that place in your mind of that early 2020, of that fear and you know how do we see people, who do we see, are they gonna tell us the truth of if they've been sick? You know, that paranoia, if you remember that time, that's kind of where Get a Grip started in my head. Um, so I would say the whole year of 2020, um, oh, this, do you remember this? Like looking on mm -hmm. the phone uh, for the cases and well, we're okay, we're in, we're in the Fox Valley, there's not really a lot of cases out here, we're okay, we're okay, we're, remember that? Like that feeling of like, it's not gonna hit us, we're gonna be okay, kids are gonna go back to school. I'm looking at like all the moms here who remember <laughs> the, when the kids were home, like it's two weeks, they'll be home for two weeks, then they can go back and so like, all oh, that time. So I found it impossible to write, even to read. I couldn't concentrate on reading. I was, I don't know if everyone else had that, but I was constantly looking at my phone, looking for updates. Um, and I'm so happy that we are past that. It's almost unbelievable that we are past that when you, when you go back and you look at this moment, uh, because this was so intense. Um, one of the things that when I started writing Get a Grip, because it's a COVID setting, I kept thinking, who's going to want to read this? And I feel like I'm seeing more and more that we are at a place in time where people are ready to talk about it and how scary and how crazy and the things that we had to do and like, you know, things we saw on TV. I don't know if, if um, specifically what I'm thinking of is the morning show. Um, yeah. on Apple if you watch that one it seems like it's, it's interesting <laughs> yeah like it's interesting to watch that and see that from their standpoint what they saw and you know what they um, experienced because now we're, we're past it and we're able to look back um, but yeah this was my I had an inability to read or write um, trouble concentrating so the Kelly Clark mystery series got completely put aside for me um, and tons of anxiety for me. Um, do you remember just that, like, what are we gonna do tomorrow? Like, we, my, my daughter was in kindergarten and uh, I was supposed to be putting her on a computer to 
meet with the other kindergartners to sing songs, and that was insane. That did not work for my daughter. She couldn't look at a computer screen. She had no, no ability to concentrate. So we just we just made the best of it. The good thing is my husband and I have always worked from home, so that wasn't really a change. There wasn't much of a change, but we didn't have kids there while we were trying to do stuff. Um, so again, I'm just thinking to in order to get into the state of where get a grip. Um, or you know to understand where get a grip comes from I'm I'm asking go back to where you were in that 2020 and that anxiety and that um, and that so that's if you have that little base in your head you'll see how the characters get created which we'll go into um, so yeah so probably around I would say so that was all of 2020 was you know you don't realize it at the time but your brain is storing all of this stuff for a story um, when you're a writer and like January of 2021 I got into that place of like okay I'm ready like let's let's start the process I got some stuff but um, one of the things that my husband and I did is um, through COVID is we continued on with our um, we have a, a running club that we run with called the Bat Batavia Runner Gang and that was one thing that got us through COVID is that okay well we're outside we're running. Um, we had kind of, you know, ridiculous rules of like, you be one sidewalk and we'll go on the street and we'll run and we'll, you know, but, but at least we're together. So that kind of kept our socializing going through COVID. Because um, you're just, you're desperate to like, we, we are very social people and that was all cut off. So um, that was one of the things that kept, kept us going, kept us, you know, normal through COVID, I guess. Um, and again, like you don't realize at the time, that these activities might be giving you ideas. Um, so let's go into where Get a Grip came from. Does everybody, is everyone familiar with Rear Window? Yes, one of my all time favorite movies. Yeah, yeah. So if you're not familiar with it, um, a gentleman has a broken leg, he's in New York, um, in, um, why can't I think of the neighborhood? can't think of it but very crowded neighborhood the apartments are kind of on top of each other they look into each other's windows and um, he is a photographer he has a um, broken leg so he's sitting there at home every day he's on bed rest basically and he thinks he sees or hears a possible murder uh, and you know everyone kind of puts him to the side like no you know but you, it's if you heard a scream no big deal Everything is fine. So a, a gentleman murders his wife is what he thinks. And so he has to basically prove it to his girlfriend, to his friends by using his camera to track the neighbor and figure it out that yes, this really has happened. So I've always loved that concept of what if you knew something but nobody believed you. Um, and so again, I always say like a setting, to me, a book begins by me going somewhere and having that moment of like, bam, like here it is. So I'm always waiting for that. And then I, then I go. And so one day I was out with some of my Batavia runner gang members on a run. And I was in a neighborhood that is, was not familiar to me. Um, uh, actually my two girls I was running with are here today, um, Kathy and Amanda. And so I remember that I had heard something um, and maybe it was like, it was nothing, maybe a cat meowing or something, but it was that moment in my mind where it was like, like, well, what if, what if I heard a scream? And, and I just kept going and running and something had happened. And what if I told the girls and they were like, no, everything's fine. And so that's the, that's really where Get a Grip came from. Um, in my story, well, I'll, I'll, we'll do this first. So here's how the plan of a book comes together. The idea comes, so in my case it was, I heard a strange noise out on a run, and then I got the idea of like, well, what if it's, what if it's much worse than that? So put that to the side. Um, I, I started by talking, the, the number one thing that I thought was, I definitely want the main character to be somebody who's gone through COVID and had, um, has PTSD. So somebody who was on the front line, um, somebody who's in an unstable mental state because of what they saw, um, and somebody who's maybe not so 
believable or maybe pushed their their thoughts are a little bit you know pushed to the side because because of what they had just gone through so I the first character I, first character I created was Petra who is a ER uh, doctor had just gone through COVID um, lost her brother as well and so she's in this very PTSD state and so she believes that um, the next door neighbor has been killed uh, but no one believes her because they they feel you know Petra you just went through this you gotta just let time pass everything is fine they're probably you know she's probably somewhere everything is fine so um, what I did is I started interviewing healthcare workers who had actually um, gone through and you know frontline and um, one of the stories that uh, I learned that has stuck with me is the changing in the garage so you know you you go to the hospital you'd be stressed out because you were going and possibly putting your family at risk and then you know you come home and um, either you shower before you see your family do you remember that like that fear of like well, what have I brought from the outside um, and so so one of the nurses I talked to said you know she would she'd have clothes in the garage and so she'd get out of the car and she'd take her clothes off get her new clothes on and then be able to go inside and see the family so I just piled that in my head of you know more and more stories of like where can I how can I make Petra real what did she actually go through um, and then the other thing I really wanted to do in this is a standalone and I always wanted to do change of voice so in this book I created um, Petra Lisa and, uh, and Lisa is also in the neighborhood gone through something well they all really have gone through something um, and and Jane. And so they, they, these three friends are all in a traumatic state of COVID and um, I needed to create three independent characters with these inter independent voices. Uh, and so then, then we go into the execution, which my thing is I do three pages a day for six months. I have two to three, I would say. I am very much um, just a little at a time kind of writer. I can't sit down and get two chapters you know or two three chapters done i'm very do a little at a time do a short time frame so usually in six months i could be done with a book um and then put together the package the visual you know what it what it is um so my setting i knew i wanted to use chicago again uh and i i the other meat that i wanted to put in is what if these three women were very wealthy and so they look like they have it together um, and what if, you know, it's kind of like a Desperate Housewives where things look nice on the outside, but it's not that clear or it's not that great on the inside. And so um, the other thing I wanted to, we have, we've all been through many winters in Chicago. Um, you know that those alone, besides COVID, can make you a little crazy. So I definitely wanted a winter setting. I thought that would be perfect. Um, and so these are the, this is who I came up with. Petra, who's the ER doctor uh, with PTSD, she's the main one that is saying something's up. Um, but again, she's just been through a lot of trauma. We're still. I, the other thing is, I never, I never name a town. I never name an exact time because I don't know about you guys, but COVID's kind of gray for me now. I don't remember at the time. It seemed so black and white as far as what the time frame was. But when I look back, I don't remember. Were, were we wearing masks then? What were the rules at that point? So I just kind of make it a winter in COVID. Um, so you know that I'm hoping that the readers, you know, are able to roll with that, okay, and, and not stressed out about why are they wearing masks? We were wearing masks at that time because sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Um, okay, so the three women are Petra, the ER doctor, Janie, who's the next door neighbor to Petra. Janie is a realtor. Do you remember what happened with you know house prices and how successful realtors became? Um, so she's the next door neighbor. She's a realtor who's kicking butt in her uh, profession because she's selling homes, doing great. The, but her secret is she is a um, dealing with a, an addiction, which uh, in her case is um, an alcohol addiction that she's gotten over. But in COVID, she's so stressed, she's worried about, I think I'm gonna fall off the wagon. And her husband is older, so she has that stress too. And then the other neighbor is Lisa. 
Lisa used to live in the neighborhood with Petra and Janie, but Lisa has just gone through a horrific divorce, so she has had to leave this very wealthy neighborhood to move to way on the other side of town. She's in very bad shape as far as finances, but she's actually the happiest of the three because she's gone back to school, um, she's away from the, the ex-husband, and she starts a little love affair with a much younger man. So everyone has their stuff going on. Everyone has their, you know, it's the three characters that work together. But the thing that I wanted to do is basically develop three main characters. So they all had to have big enough stories that you can see why they can't team up. They should, um, but they can't because they all have these spinning plates. Um, Carrie is the missing neighbor. She lives next door to Petra. The lights have been dark for a while, the house has been empty, but she's also kind of a mysterious neighbor. Um, and also, if you remember at the time, people were leaving during COVID to go live somewhere else for a while. It's safer in Florida. I'm gonna go live in Florida for six months. We're gonna take the kids out of school and go wait till this passes. So she could just be in Florida, you know? She could be where she, with her, with her family somewhere else. But Petra, it, it feels something is up. This is not right. And then the other element that I loved adding in here is the husbands. Um, so they are, I don't name them um, because I wanted, again, the three, they're named in the book, but not here on the screen, I mean, um, because I really wanted the three, the three main characters. And the husbands are trying to help their wives, trying to be support, but also um, you know, struggling with COVID and, and best way to help. So again, just the COVID effect. That's the other thing I think is so important to remember in this book. Um, with being mothers, one of the things that we felt, um, or you know, grandmothers, parents of any sort, was the judgment of what should you be doing with your kids. And you know, that is another thing I very much remember is you did. You brought your kids here. Oh, it's not safe there. Or you're gonna. You know, the the big joke is like if you had a sleepover. Like, oh, this is. I'm putting this on Facebook. You were, you put. You know, you had kids over for a sleepover. You can't do that right now. So the mothers are a little crazy from this this COVID effect. Um, and then as far as the the other thing where this book came from was I I thought a lot about the women, the moms. I read an article where they called them the ultimate shock absorbers of COVID, meaning the emotions and the new schedules, um, meaning the kids are home and they had to keep working. How did it happen? How did we get past the fear and you know the social anxiety? So these women are under an intense amount of stress at this time. Um, but you know some some good, some bad. They're friends. They're trying to rely on each other. Um, but also they kind of feel like Petra's a little crazy in her assumption that, hey, I think something happened to the neighbor and we have to look into it. So they don't necessarily want to dive in. But ultimately, the ladies do and they do solve you know, the mystery together. Um, so it's a fun, there's still that fun element to the book always in my Cozy Mysteries where it's you know, them, the three of them being a little crazy, trying to you know, figure out what happened in the neighborhood. Um, trying to support each other, but also dealing with their own trouble. Um, so this is just going over the characters a little bit more. Um, Petra, her marriage is under pressure. That's the other element with Petra's husband. Is her brother has just passed away, so she's dealing with grief. She's dealing with PTSD. Um, her three kids are at home. She's trying to continue to be a doctor. Carrie is next door to her. Petra thinks, back to that moment where I was inspired for the book, um, Petra feels that she's heard a scream. So that's where the whole thing starts, is I think something happened to the neighbor. I know she's in the house. What are you talking about? The house has been dark for weeks now. There's nobody there. Let's go check it out. Are you crazy? We're not going over there. So that's the whole book, is you know Petra trying to be like, just walk over to the house with me. Let's just go look at it. Let's let's. Let's, let's peek at it, let's peek inside. No, we're, we're not doing that. Um, and then Lisa is, like I mentioned, she's the one that had to move out of the neighborhood. She's gone through a divorce. Um, but again, I think the funnest part about Lisa is that she's going through this hot new romance with this younger man and trying to figure that out. Her kids are older, so she's trying to figure out, you know, can I move on with my life now? I'm, am I at a point where I can have a relationship? 
or do I, you know, just am I completely devoted to my kids, which I have been for so long, but maybe it's time to move on. And then Janie, the successful realtor, who again is dealing with um, the addiction issues. So, okay, so that's the story. Um, the, uh, like I said, it's winter, Chicago, that's the setting. Um, three main characters, three changing voices. I loved doing that. I, that's the first time I, I've always had it from Kelly's voice in, uh, in the series. And not that the other characters weren't important, but they just, Kelly was the main character. This one has the, each chapter is the new voice. So that was fun to do. So I wanna talk a little bit about writing. Um, a lot of people ask about the process and you know how, how I do it. Um, so I start with, you know, I always say fill the tank, and that's my reading. Uh, I love to read um, because I, I love to just, you know, be um, a, a sponge absorbing. What's hap what are other people writing about? What are, you know, what, what interests me? Um, watching, I said watching, but like watching shows, I'm a big, I have all the streaming, <laughs> everything, Netflix, Hulu, all of it. Um, Tracking ideas. Um, I am always writing. You know, if I I do keep notes either in a notebook or on my phone of what about this or what about this. And I have been tracking ideas for the finale of the Kelly Clark mystery series for years now. It's it hasn't gone anywhere, but I, I have ideas. It's a matter of wrapping it up. Um, and then so as far as the execution, when I hit that moment where I get my uh, moment where I'm inspired by something, and like I said that like the motor starts, um, I try to set up a plan, and that's usually a six month plan. Um, I'm a very, uh, I, I just in general, I make lists in life, you know, I lo love my lists. So um, I don't necessarily do a set outline. Um, I have a very general outline, but what I've learned is to give myself grace and move that around, um, and meaning, something could start, but as I'm writing, it could completely change. So a lot of writers do, are very set on, you have to have a set outline. I'm, I am not one of those. And my, if you were to see my outline, it's just like chicken scratch, you know, something that I could like cross out, change, keep moving on. Um, I try to do two pages per day. Uh, where I used to get up early, because I found that like early morning time, pre-family, pre-kids was a great, uh, creative time um, I, I find uh, I have a new time um, so I work Monday through Friday Hanson search group um, at 3 o'clock around that time my husband leaves to go pick up our youngest daughter and so the house is empty so I have a little time she I, it's, second she walks in the door it's over all work is over so i know there's that 30 to 40 minutes uh a day where i can turn everything off and just write um, and what i've the rule i've made is don't go back and fix and fix if you're really writing two pages a day just get it out get it out get it out and then when you're done you can always go back you can cut you can take the characters out you can take you know, jibber jabber out. It doesn't. It just get it out on the paper. And by paper, I mean I type. I, I have to do computer. Um, and then again, six months, I'll have a full script. Um, as far as marketing, um, you know, my my thing is social. Uh, excuse me, uh, cozy mystery. Um, so that would be my my advice for people who are going into writing is to find your niche. Um, mine is. Chicago. Uh, I really like writing this area, what I know. Um, I like writing uh, a female lead voice. Um, and I do like writing, uh, it seems like I keep coming to three, uh, a trio of a relationship. Meaning in the Kelly Clark mystery series, there's the trio of the sisters. There's three sisters that are, are always together and have their adventures. And then in this new Get a Grip book, um, same. It's these two, is three neighbors who are um, trying to get through COVID together and you know make, make it through while possibly solving a murder. Um, but marketing, um, talking about marketing, marketing has become so big. Um, the, like I was saying earlier, audiobook has become so big. Um, just the digital, digital world has become so much more than when I started in 2013, when it was paperback and you know just moving into ebook. 
Um, so social media has become big, Amazon ads have become big. Um, AI is very much, are you guys hearing about AI writing books, um, writing scripts? Um, that is very, very much here and happening. Um, I remember my brother, the summer my brother was visiting, and he said, tell me the, tell me the plot, what, you know, ge the general plot of Get a Grip. And he, he had an AI um, software on his phone. So I said, yeah, okay, so there's these three neighbors. One thinks that the neighbor is killed, no one believes her. And so he set it into his phone, and you could see AI was able to come up with something. You know, not the same, but it's scary what AI could make. It's so, it's a little, yeah, it's a, it is here and it is happening. So we either work with it or, um, you know, it's, it's, it's dark days. Um, the other way I get things done, I have two accountability clubs that I belong to. Um, one is with my my um, writing friend. So we've been together for, let me see, I think we joined forces <coughs> after um, Give Me Chocolate. So with her, I've written four books. And the way that she and I work, and she's, she is about to release her fourth book, um, it is the best way to write. We don't write together. Um, what we do is we meet once a month. So we set goals. Um, I'll see you next month, and when I see you, I want you to have you know 500 pages, your cover finished, and you know your social media figured out. So we set the goals. Um, we live three doors apart. These are my neighbors, so that makes it so convenient. Um, but this has been the best thing that I have done as far as writing because I hate going to her house and sitting across the table and saying, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. <laughs> so I push myself and she does too because it's the worst feeling to say, next month when I see you, I'm going to have this done and then say, I didn't do anything. So um, that is great. Um, accountability clubs, I think, make you, you have to be very vulnerable because you are sharing dreams. You're sharing these crazy creative ideas. Um, the vulnerability works to your advantage uh, because it's, it, go, it makes you go to that creative place and it makes you work harder. Um, and then goal systems, again, what, what are you, what, how are you gonna report um, you know, what you've done? So I have my, um, my uh, uh, writing accountability partner. I also have, there's four of us, um, that uh, uh, local uh, female entrepreneurs that joined forces um, to, to start an accountability club. Two of them are here today. Stand up, ladies, come on. Yay, you're here, yes. <laughs> They're so embarrassing. <laughs> But um, it's been great because the four of us are, we are all um, people making our you know, own businesses, making our own ways. Sometimes it's lonely you know, to be in that world of making these crazy decisions and you know, forming these businesses and whatever. So we meet once a month as well. We, we do um, weekly reporting on Sunday nights. So you report in by text, you know, here's what I have done. For, remember that goal that I had? Um, here's what I have done. Here's what I didn't do. It's the vulnerability of having to say, I didn't do it. It's so, it will push you so much to get things done. So those two accountability clubs have been great for me. Um, it's really, really moved things forward. And it's feedback. What do you guys think of this color for the cover of Get a Grip? Here, wait, this is funny. Um, so I, for this cover, um, I used an artist, and I think I, this is, might be my like sixth one. And so I said, like, I need, the look I'm looking for is like, rich lady neighborhood in Chicago. And so um, the first one, uh, my friend uh, Kathleen, my accountability partner, was like, I just don't see rich lady. So we kept switching the houses, like, make them bigger, 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 you know? So, so I like what came in the end, but um, it, took, it took that honest, feedback of someone saying, you know, here's what here's what I think would make it better. Here's what I think would make it better. So that is another plus of an accountability club is you're getting that feedback. Um, okay, so uh, the book was released. Actually, I think it was, it was supposed to come out October 13th. It came out a week early because it made it through that, um, like I said, that, that Amazon review process early, which is a good sign. That means all the technical qualifications were met. 
So the Audible is out, um, Kindle is out, Paperback is out. Uh, so yeah, it, it is out. Um, so that's me. If you guys want to sign up for, I do have a new website. Um, I think I was telling Kevin, I think you would ask about that. So when I, I used to have a website that was totally focused on Kelly Clark Mystery, uh, my goal was again to expand into the standalone mysteries as well. And so I needed to change the whole marketing of myself, meaning I can't have a Kelly Clark Mystery website anymore because I'm, I'm more than that now. Um, so I'm Annie Hansen author on all my uh, platforms. So um, AnnieHansenAuthor.com is the website. You can email me directly. You can sign up for um, my email if you want on AnnieHansenAuthor.com. Um, and then again, my big place where I uh, am weekly is I love being on uh, Instagram for those What You're Reading Wednesdays. So that's it. Any questions? Nothing. Are you going to read the book? Yeah. I'm in your accountability group. What is the variety of what people do? Totally, very different. Um, so there's there's me that has the Hanson Search group, um, and then the writing. Um, Kathleen is a. Um, a physical therapist, and she also has started a new business. Um, if bladder, what is it? The bladder Pel coach. The bladder coach. So she coaches women on pelvic floor. That's her specialty in PT. And then we have Amanda, who is um, chiropractor, uh, and she has a weight loss business, and also has released one book. Second one is coming, and then uh, a travel agent. So we have quite a span of different uh, different businesses. And we are going to Mexico <laughs> in three weeks to celebrate our uh, victories this past couple of years. So, yeah, that's what I mean. It's fun. It's fun to be pushing each other and then to celebrate together on this, the stuff that we're, that we're doing. Any other? Do you, oh, it's open. Go ahead. Do you think, uh, back to Kelly Clark, will that be it? The last... Your number five yeah you know what I'm starting to accept is I don't know because okay. <laughs> I thought I'll get this script get a grip done and I'll go back and wrap up number five but I still am not I'm kind of waiting for that like inspiration inspiration moment. yeah so I don't know okay I kind of want to see I feel like the the uh, momentum of the audiobooks out now um, I you know I want to see if people are ready or if they're asking, you know, people ask me all the time about number five, but I, I would like to see where the audiobooks go and then maybe make some decisions on that. I would love to do another standalone. They are much easier. <laughs> they are, like I said, you wrap it up and that's it. But, but fans in general love series. If you get them into number one, they're with you through the whole ride for the most part. So um, it's been such a nice base for my audience. Jolene, did you have a question? When it came to starting to market yourself in, in your books, was it trial and error, or did you have advice coming from other platforms? Um, I think it, it's, it's funny, because I, um, I am the oldest member in the Accountability Club, and sometimes I definitely feel that in like social media uh, because I'm not as, I don't feel like I'm nearly as savvy as some of the other ladies. So um, that has been a huge help for me as far as marketing. Uh, I, does anyone watch Instagram Reels? You know, it's like I'm totally addicted to those. I didn't even know how, to, six months ago, I didn't even know how to make them. And that is such a big part of how to, you know, the hashtags and drawing your audience and you know how to get your name out there and how to get followers um, that that I definitely need and get help uh, with um, but you know as far as like the marketing of um, I always use a you know a, someone professional to help me with covers and come up with ideas and the, the color schemes um, you know actually I took the uh, like the, the cupcake is a picture that I took that a professional artist, you know, made into a cover. Um, that snowman was a random from Take the Donut, was a random decoration from my house. So I'm in them, but I love getting professional 
uh, influence in there because everything is, it's hard to figure out what's best color-wise and all of that. Because I remember early on you were in local bookstores doing book signings. Was that just all you saying, all right, I got to go talk to someone here, I've talked to somebody here? Yeah, a lot of me. Yeah, a lot of me in the very beginning pushing. Um, and then, like I said, I kind of feel like I hit a block in COVID. You know, there were just, there were no live events. Um, I definitely stepped back a lot. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of having to revive my name and my brand a little bit. Um, so yeah, it, but word of mouth moves, you know, too, and then you start getting asked to do events and, and that's great um, because that, that, that's how you get out there. But social media is, just continues to be a, you know, a growing monster that you need on your side. And I always say like, don't fight the Amazon. Amazon is great. It's a great way to get your books out. They, they do a great marketing. They're, they're always on with your numbers and the reports um, as far as, you know, what, what you've sold, um, how many copies went out. So Amazon has been wonderful. Um, I'm an exclusive author to Amazon. Uh, and with that, you, I get on to, um, if you have Prime members, uh, that I, my books are much more um, accessible. So I find that I just stick with Amazon. It's been, it's been great. Yes? Well, who's your other author that's your name? Julie Olasek? Do you know? So The Fifth Floor? Yeah. Yes. I, we've had her on. She's been here. She's done Book Between Bites. Yep. Um, so she has a, um, this is a funny story, so she has a trilogy and that's of the young, uh, the young girl who survives the trauma and um, you know the stories about the, the other um, patients uh, in, the, in the psych ward, that's the fifth floor is why it's called that. Um, so that trilogy is great. And then she, she started, we kind of had the same thing where you know in COVID we stopped meeting. So we used to meet once a month, and we literally just walked to each other's houses, um, and we stopped all through COVID because we weren't writing, we weren't promoting, we weren't, we didn't really have goals. We just, you know, were very set in, you know, being home with our families. And so um, she worked on a book. I think she's been working on. Kevin's working with her too. I think it's like seven years she's worked on a book, and it was this humongous. It's a historical fiction, huge. And the good thing is, is she divided it into three so she will have she will have a trilogy that she's releasing the first one's done it, it should be coming soon um, but you know it's like she was kind of in this place of like oh my god for seven years I've been working on this book and it's humongous and you know just in these last years has she really been able to zone in and, and say okay well here's one book here's another one here's another one so um, yeah her books are also going to audio do you guys listen to audiobooks? Are you? Yeah, yeah. I feel like um, podcasts went crazy during COVID. You know, everybody wanted podcasts, um, and audiobooks really took off. Yes. For my career, I was the reader's advisor to the blind. Okay. Physically handicapped in 1970, 80, 90, and that got me hooked on audio. Yeah. And I probably. Listen to 70% of the books and read 30%. Interesting. And my question is who's the narrator for your audio? Um, so, through Amazon, you, they have a process where um, you get to try out narrators. So, you you know list your uh, your book, mm -hmm. and then you get um, narrators who send you, uh, you know, you put maybe the first 10 minutes out there, and so you get auditions. And so, you go through and audition, and I'm blanking out on both. I used a different, I used one narrator for the series, and then I wanted a different voice for Get a Grip. Um, but so the, for the series, um, her name is Amanda, first name, I cannot remember her last name. But I, I liked her so much for the first book that I hired her for the rest of the series. And then um, Leslie is the, is Get a Grip, so she's, you know, a, for the standalone, a different, different voice. So that's fun because it's fun to like listen and like no that's not Kelly and you know no that's not Kelly just going through that and getting feedback from other people what do you think of this narrator and a lot of it is timing too who's available at what time you know I need a quick turnaround on this can you get this back to me in three weeks 
I am so happy that I don't do it. <laughs> a lot of people have asked me that, you know, is, why didn't you read it? Oh my God, it's, it's super time consuming and it is best handled by the professional. A lot of times it's professional actresses or actors who, you know, take these projects on. Like, I would so much rather have them hire someone to do that rather than me myself. And then one person has to have four or five voices. Yes, exactly. And they'll do that in the audition. They'll, you can ask them, you know, give me a male voice. Um, uh, again, I'm using, my books always tend to be three female voices. So that's a little tricky because you have to, you have to have mm -hmm. Callie's voice, you have to have Nikki's voice, you know, you have to have different voices. And I think the ones I've hired, I, I love that they did a good job with that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's neat. You can do like, I need a British accent. I need a young voice. I need a, you know, older voice. I need whatever you want. And that one person does all that? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, yep. Did you have a question? Well, I was going to say two things. One is don't try it yourself because these people have like sound booths. Yes. They have all the red equipment. Right. And the second thing is you can hire multiple voices. Some clients okay. do, or authors do do that. Okay. Um, Kevin does all of my um, formatting and technical stuff. See, that's why I have to hire Kevin because I call it technical stuff. That's how bad I am at that. Um, but you know, getting the formats in and you know, in the ebook, Kindle book, all that stuff. So um, yeah, it, it, you can tell in the additions too right away within like the first twenty seconds who's recording in their car and then who's in a professional you know sound booth, and that's who we want to go with because it sounds completely different. Um, so yes. Amanda Fischer. Yes, Amanda Fischer was the, uh, for the first series, she was the narrator. Yeah. Anything else? Well, thank you so much for coming today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, all of my, everything, uh, audio, ebook, you know, Kindle, everything is on the Amazon. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a devoted Amazon seller. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm always on Instagram. I would love, like I said, love, love, love if, if you follow me on Instagram. Tell me what you're reading. Wait, let me ask that. What is everybody reading right now? What are some of the big hits? I have a um, book club myself, and we're always looking for, you know, what, what are the next big hits? What are the next, what's the up and coming? Yes? I have a book for Brent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's called This Is What It Sounds Like, and it is the science behind why you are drawn to the music that you like. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. Anyone else have any rec? Yes? I'm yeah. about AI. What? AI? AI. Yeah. All I read about it's, it's I'm reading that was uh, recommended on your website was Mad Honey. Was that great. was excellent. Did it? Great. Mad Honey? Mad honey. A good yes. twist yeah. at the end. So good. Nice. Did you have one? <coughs> we just read uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh. oh, I just started that. I don't think I could do it. Yeah. Was it sad? No, it was interesting. Oh, I'm sure. It's, it's a movie. Yeah, yeah. With Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I could do it. I just started. That was good. And frustrating at the same time. I'm like, that made me so mad the way she was treated. Yeah, it was terrible. Did you have one? Oh, um, Jesus and John Wayne. It's, it's about evangelicals and why they make the decisions they make, especially the voting decisions. Cool. It's very, very impressive. I had no idea if that was the thought process for a lot of people, how they rationalize. Oh yeah. 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 Interesting. Our book club this month is Lost Apothecary. Yes. Um, is it a dark cover? I think I've read yeah. that one. It's like the store, that little like lost store. Uh -huh. That was excellent. I, yeah, I really like that one. Um, our, our book club just did Outlive, which is the, it was the Oprah book this past year, um, all about like ways to live longer. Uh, very interesting. Any other big hits? I'm always looking for recommendations. Well, I have books here if you're interested. Um, I have Get a Grip here. I also have all the books from my series. Um, so the books are 15 apiece. If you're interested, I'm happy to sign to whoever. But thank you so much for having me today. Thank you.